these to a full size. So we could actually sleep four if they want to be in the same bed. Or two if they don't. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you can come visit me. Yeah. Good road trip. It's a great town, too. And we have a museum about a mile and a half from our house that is, um, it was, um, it was about 22 or 24 million dollar museum built about five or six years ago. And Forest Mars of Mars candy bars used to live within about two, two miles of us. He has, his name is on so many things like that. He, it's the Forest E. Mars um, Brinton Museum. And um, so it's a lovely place, really nice. There's a Native American, a Plains Indian collection in there that was put together in Bighorn. And then um, there was nowhere to house it. So they shipped it to the Chicago Art Institute and it was housed there for years. And then when Forrest heard about it, he said, let's build something. So he was really generous. Yeah, he passed away about three or four years ago. So, but he was a great philanthropist in the area. Wyoming has no state income tax. So it draws people like him who have a lot to shelter, <laughs> you know. So yesterday I asked everyone to bring a, about five images of objects that gave them aesthetic ecstasy and then to bring one of your own pieces that you really feel gets, gets there for you. So what I want to do first is, oh, and I need some paper. Um, does someone want to give me one of the photographs that they really like? Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, so we need that. Okay. Pencil would be great. I love pencils. So um, actually, I'd like to start with somebody who brought a picture of a pot or something, a ceramics, a ceramics piece of somebody else's, something that moved you. That's nice. I mean, I want a picture of it because I want to project it. Okay. Yeah, I've got a couple now here. Okay, let's. No, I don't know. Great. Ooh, Pippin Drysdale. Yeah, I, I have one of her pieces. She's an Australian. And um, it, it's interesting because she lives in near in or near Perth on the west coast. Uh -huh. And she, um, she calls me darling. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, this, the best porcelain thrower in the, in the country throws all of her pieces. And then she does this decoration and it's as smooth as a baby's butt. So it, it looks, it is inscribed, but then, I mean, I, I don't really know her full process, but fantastic work. Yeah. And her son owns a, a little restaurant in um, Minnesota, in Minneapolis. And she, I put her on the cover of Ceramics Art and Perception once and she gave me a piece. It's about this big. It's, yeah. Okay, let's start with this piece right here. And what I want you to do is to just give me words that you think describe this piece. Can you zoom in on it a little? Sure. Fluid, okay. Yeah. 
That's the word I was looking for. Okay. It's penetrated. Dimensional. Okay. Has lift. It's green. It's what? Dark. Stark. So maybe even minimal, huh? Good one. Pleasing. I get a sense of motion from it. Yeah, someone did. Uh huh. Oh, in the chat they in said the chat. that. Okay, great. Good, good. That was Evelina. It was what? Evelina. Oh, hi, Evelina. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? To me, it's almost um, amoeba-like, you know? I mean, it's, it, which would be organic, but it has that sense of being like a single cell organism. <laughs> mm hmm Me? Yeah. Sure, I will, sorry. Yeah, good point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who brought this? You did. Uh, do you have any of your other pictures? Um, Did you bring? Oh, okay. So you just brought two pictures? Yeah, that's fine. That's great. Yeah, this one is. Oh, my goodness. George Orr. <laughs> Okay, are both are those up there too? Good. Okay. So now we're seeing that this that the Perez piece down here is a little bit of an anomaly to the five that she brought. It's it's different than the other four in many ways. So let's talk about um this piece right here. Let's make a, a new list. Can you zoom in on the center George Orr piece? Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, is that better? Okay, undulating. Yeah. The person on chat is probably going to say organic. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's playful. Mm -hmm. Are you all familiar with George Orr? Yeah. He was called, it was the turn of the century, the 20th century, Potter in Biloxi, Mississippi. And he, um, he's called the Mad Potter of Biloxi. After his death, they found an entire, like a barn or a warehouse full of his work. It's full of his work. And I, I know this is, good, is being recorded, but I still, I vow that this was the first abstract expressionism in clay, not Peter Volkos. <laughs> he was 50 years before Volkos. Um, and this, this center one is very typical of his, his work. Sturdy. Sturdy. Motion, huh? Twisted. Yes, very grounded. Um, there's a sense of motion to it, I, I think. You almost feel the, the rhythm of the wheel. speckled red oh yeah interesting Someone in the chat says fluid fluid it's what assertive And uh, if we look at this first one, it's also truncated on the top, isn't it? There's an even top where those could easily have been different heights. Um, it isn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd like a serif. That's a, that's an interesting word for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Right. What was it? The last word. Capped? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you didn't understand what a serif is? No. So um, if you, it's the little lines that are at the ends of letters. So you'll have sans serif which is without serif, which would be like Helvetica. Yeah. And then the ones with the little lines, those are the serifs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The little extra mark. Yeah, little serifs. Like, like times, uh, it's right. It's either sans serif or serif. So times, times New Roman has serifs. Yeah. And and I think that's an interesting word for this because it uh, or a description for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same, uh, all three of these are the same artist. 
Oops. This one? Yeah, I'm trying to, we're trying to get that. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Black blob, is that what you said? That is a little hard to see, isn't it? Yeah. Wrinkled. Wrinkled. Mm -hmm. Fabric, fabric like. Oops, I can't even write it. A what? Derriere. <laughs> so that's kind of um, another way of saying figurative. And, and this one has a figurative quality to it as well. Curvaceous, woo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have wrinkled down. Um, it looks like a glossy glaze. There really isn't an applied um, like surface texture to it. Um, definitely undulating, right? When I was about in the fourth grade, I think, I went and saw, I got my hair cut short, first time ever, and I went and saw Teacher's Pet. Remember, that was Doris Day, any of you? And... So I had this little blackboard in my room, and I was pretending that I was Doris Day, and I was the teacher. I thought I looked so much older with my hair cut short, you know, that I, and every time I, I write on a board, I think of that. <laughs> so, so my husband and my daughter, if I get upset about something, they'll say, don't worry your pretty little Doris Day head about this. <laughs> so I have this affinity with Doris Day. And somebody actually walked up to me in a penny store one day and said, are you Doris Day? <laughs> I thought my husband was going to die laughing. I think Doris Day at the time was 85. <laughs> So, in a way, it was kind of a left-handed compliment. <laughs> it's <was> funny. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Shiny, the, the middle one is shiny. Um, this one doesn't look shiny, does it? I know his work, and his work is not shiny. Is the top one, that doesn't look like Gustavo. This is Gustavo also, both of these. This is so different for his work. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. This is a lot like his work. He's a Mexican artist and spends half his, he, his girlfriend is French and he spends half his time in France. Or he did, I don't know if they're still together. Okay, this is number two. Is number three. Okay, uh, any other words for this one? It's also green, right? Green? Mm -hmm. I think it is. It looks like it from the picture. <laughs> okay. So um, 
we can keep going and doing this together if you'd like, because it, it's easier than, than maybe um, doing it on your own, or you can work on your own for a little bit and then we could come together with it. But what we're going to do is, here's my list, I, you probably can't read it. Should have used a pen. So undulating, undulating, undulating all are, are on all three things. Um, organic, organic, organic on all three. Um, we didn't go as far on the second one, but yeah, fluid. Did we have fluid on here? I know we said it. Or, Oh, it is the first one. Yeah. Okay. And we don't have it here, do we? Yeah, we do. Fluid. And this one is certainly fluid. Um, is what? Movement. Movement. Uh, we have motion on this one. And motion here. Pardon? There you go. The top one has motion as well, doesn't it? And I'm, what's interesting to me is that the this one and these couldn't be different except for these qualities that are coming out. I mean, we said motion about that one because it is figurative and about this one because it is figurative and looks as if it could be moving forward. I would think of this part as the front of it. The front of it. Right here. Um, and I think we'd come up with similar, a similar list for this one as well. Uh, so the we have two that are shiny playful is on a couple of them is this having any resonance with your work? <laughs> yeah, okay, that's great. That's what we want. I mean, um, doing this with work. Now, I, I told you yesterday that when I start to write an article about somebody's work, I start making this list, this list, so that I'm understanding um, just where to go with it. And uh, yeah, and, and the way I used to use this with my students, I think I explained yesterday, they had to do three pages of these images and then make as many lists or list items as they could. I was hoping for 25, but I only got usually about 10 or 15. Then they would make a list and we'll do this for you. Um, then they would make a list of the words that recur on the on their lists and then those basically are keying into that aesthetic that that internal aesthetic um, we could probably do this with any era of picasso's work you know and see a a, a, a repetition of these same qualities that come out Mm-hmm. I did. Yeah. Images. Oh, that's what you, and and um we'll look at those. We'll look at those too. Um yeah. It's a little more difficult to come up with all of the the words, but it'll be interesting to see 
how they hold together and what that those lists look like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, so you all spent last night in aesthetic ecstasy, right? You were just thrilled. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I wish I'd done that, John. <laughs> okay, so let's do somebody else's for a little bit. And I'll give you these. Yeah. A second one down. That's yeah, that was my point too. Okay, so that's with this. Okay. Well, let's do this one. Let's do this one and just see what kind of a list we can come up with on that because. There's obviously something that drew you to it that is within your aesthetic. So let's do this as number four. It could be slips. It could be slips because the carved line looks like it's gone, you know, maybe cleared up those, delineated those sections. So some, did somebody say organic? Is that handbuilt? I think he hand builds. Yeah, I've never seen him work. Pardon? Angular. Angular. I'm trying to keep up here. So I have angular, twisted, flowing, choppy, precise, serif. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. But that edge gives it movement, doesn't it? Uh huh. Okay, curvilinear. I'm just up here being Doris Day. I want you to know, <laughs> Doris. Yeah. Yes, I put down green. <laughs> you, yeah. It's very what? Oh, yes, yes, precise, I think. Oh, it is architectural, uh-huh. Okay. It's, it's quite grounded as opposed to the top one. Pointy. Pointy. Yes. It is, it is go ahead. Somebody say defined. And actually defined could relate to this number one. 
to this one. Yeah. They're both outlined. Outlined, okay. Yeah. So like here, the, this, these are outlined in white as are these. And I think if you look at the individual forms within that piece, they are quite organic, although we put down geometric. So it's a nice combination of the geometric and the organic. I don't know if they're, um, it looks to me like they're, it's carved in. Um, so that makes me think it might be slips. But it could be like a, a vitreous slip. Yes, yes. Yeah. So here we have carved that is in common, outlined, outlined, defined, defined. Curved and carved, curved, yeah. <laughs> So let me go through this list and see if you think that they, the, any of these words apply to this one. Angular? No. You think this is angular? <coughs> the, the juxtaposition? The... Yeah. <laughs> Mm hmm Okay. So twisted is this is on the this on this piece. Do you think the uh, this one's twisted too? Mm -hmm. Twisted sister up here. Flowing. Does that fit both? Playful what? Fits them all? This one, well, all of George Orr's work brings to mind for me um, like, like it just, it happened. You know what it's like when a pot collapses on the wheel. It's like it's this is really it seems really spontaneous, as opposed to this work that um, Gustavo did is very controlled. But there's 
and yet they have these commonalities, which I find really interesting. So we have playful just about everywhere, I think. This, this one is less playful, I think. So very controlled. Would you say it was playful? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so that that ends up on all of the lists. So I'm going to I'm going to give this to you. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> but, you know, we said that about these when we started, and now we have found words that fit, that you all agree fit both, or fit all of them. So we'll just wait and see what this group comes up with. Right. Um, it's like I w was explaining yesterday that the, your aesthetic permeates your life. So the way in which I said that I make food with different uh, you know, the surprises, the change in my food. I love to bite into a nut or a dried cranberry in a salad. So it's like a little surprise and brings you back to the present when you, when you eat it. And, uh, and I love to put my CDs on shuffle. Like I said yesterday, I don't change men anymore. But... <laughs> But yeah, I don't put those on shuffle. <laughs> I have the best husband in the world. Not yet. Nope, not yet. Not yet. So, who brought these? Did Elizabeth? Virginia. Okay. That's what I said. I just mispronounced it. <laughs> okay. Well, you can, um, let me just show, can I just show this around real quick? I mean, let's step out of the, the camera. You can see a little bit that this, this linear element is in here just with different oh, yeah. colorations. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, yeah. yeah. See, you can see it continue. It's very smooth. You can see by the edge here. It's, it's almost like the feel of terra sigillata. So it has a little bit of a sheen, but not, not gloss. And and I talked yesterday about um, see you can see that the linear aspect mm -hmm. is down there. Uh, Pippin also has done these pieces, and then and some of them are not pots, but she puts them in something to think about if you are really into form like this. I mean, this is precise, beautiful form. She puts them into landscapes that some of them are upside down and, and maybe had be rounded and they, they're just beautiful. They look like mountains or um, really gorgeous. Yeah. And pardon? The pieces that I've seen are 
uh, my, the piece he sent me is about like this. And they range from, this is probably a little shorter, but they're, you know, they probably sit on a table like this, all different sizes. Yeah. This one, Pippin Drysdale. Yeah. And you, if you, if you look her up, you'll see some of these, these different, you hear my phone, huh? <laughs> ringing in my ear. Okay, so let's look at these for words. Smooth. Pardon? Smooth. Smooth. I, I missed the last word. Wait a minute. Textural. Patterned. Curious. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. No, they're not. They're not tippy. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's kind of what I was talking about yesterday with just pushing the envelope of what you can do to make it stable, but but flu have fluidity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you definitely want, you don't want to use it on the table, you know, where people would bump the table, but otherwise it's, and I, I would say that in an earthquake area, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mm hmm Definitely. Good good word, yeah. She said dynamic. The form is definitely um and, and somebody said classical. It's a real beautiful classic form, I think. Mm hmm Red. Black and white. I think it's um, kind of landscape-ish. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, so it's alluring, that's alluring, alluring, no? Grabbing? <laughs> Attractive, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's um, tedious, isn't it? I mean, the work is, is tedious work. Mm hmm No. Well, it doesn't give you that feeling, but meticulous, that's probably a better word. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a believer in list making. You know, I think of the brain, it's not a muscle, but it behaves like a muscle. So the more you exercise it by doing this kind of thing, the more fluid your brain becomes. Um, and I, I had a,
professor in undergraduate school who would, when we all walked into the room and were seated, she would say, take out your notebooks, five minutes, make a list of ships. And we would say, you want the names of boats or the kind of boats or what kind of things do you want? She'd say, that's all I'm saying, make a list of ships. And she said, if at the end of the three minutes or five minutes, you're still writing, you're a flexible thinker. You haven't, you didn't get stopped at five words. If you have non-votes on there, you're a fluid thinker. And I might have those back and forth, backwards, but um, if you have friendship and kinship and shipment and other uses of the word, that, that's when you're, you're getting creative with your thinking. And I'm a firm believer that creativity is taught. We're not, I don't, I never use the word talent because I think it implies that you were born with this ability and they use it for athletes, which weren't born with that ability. They may have a tendency or, you know, some um, desire to, to do it. Um, artists, musicians, dancers, they call that talent. Have you ever said he's a talented mathematician? You know, we, we take away the, um, the fact that it takes a lot of hard work to be an athlete and to be a musician and to be an artist. You don't wait until the night before a big race to, tra to train. You do it all along. It's, it's skill. And I prefer the word skill to talent because it, it wipes out that thought that, that, um, that any effort went into it. You know, whenever I introduce myself to people and I say, I'm an artist, they say, oh, I have no talent. You know, and that's not true. Creativity is no more than scientific method. So if a scientist can't come up with one more variation, we're never going to find a cure to anything. And that, as artists, is our job to continue to find variations on what our aesthetic does and how can we express this aesthetic in, in a way that expresses who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, the apprentice um, concept is becoming more and more common as uh, programs close, as artistic programs close in schools. In the UK, there are only a few, could count on one hand, the number of universities and colleges that have ceramics anymore. And part of the reason is that ceramics is not taught in the K through 12 schools. So nobody gets out of high school and says, when they go to, school, go to college, I want to make pots or I want to be a, a ceramics artist. So um, it's our job to try to make sure that art and, and, uh, and <laughs> ceramics stay in our K-12 program. Yes. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a little of what we're doing here. You know, you don't have to make a Pippin Drysdale pot in order to get these qualities in your own work. And it goes back to what I was talking about yesterday about your artwork, every artwork being a thesis and that you own the qualities that are in that work or you eliminate it if it's not something that you want to own. Um, yeah, I wish. Well, you, you can. No, no. And I have a story about my graduate professor, Harris Steller. Before I was there, there was uh, a Taiwanese artist named Yi Wen Kuo, 
And the Chinese way is that you copy the master to learn. And um, so Ewan went into his studio and he started making work like Harris. And Harris came in and said, don't do me unless you can do me better than, than I do. And years later, Ewan was an uh, emerging artist at Enseca. And I walked out after he had presented and Harris was just pacing in the lobby. And he came up to me and he said, I told him, and he told me the story. He said, when he came, he was copying my work. And I told him, don't do me unless I, you can do me better than I do. And he said, and he did. <laughs> so, and it's the Chinese way to have you copy the master, but then it, your work evolves. And, and it's like Gay said, you can't do it exactly because you can't put Harris into your pots. And, and so it's going to reflect you, not your professor. Now, I will say that in China, it's still, you go to the Jingdezhen school, um, they're still teaching their students to do blue and white. Do blue and white, do the, the Ming dynasty, Qing dynasty, blue and white. And um, I had a student very quietly come up to me one day and said, where can I go to learn to be creative? Because, you know, Mao shut that down. When, uh, when he went into power, he, he shut down individuality. You know, and you still see some older people walking around in gray pajamas, gray Mao pajamas over there who are still, and you see Mao's picture everywhere. So they're, they're just trying to become, and in fact, the government several years ago decided to build design schools all over the country and, um, and try to innovate, try to learn to innovate. But it's still in the, in the colleges and universities, it's rare for them to be teaching it. So it varies, you know, here we say, don't do me unless you can do me better than I do. Over there, they say, do me, you know, copy what I'm doing. So it's just a different, different way of thinking. I think this work is yummy. I mean, this is, this is one that, that Pippin, uh, were, is, her work just gives me this, that gut feeling. It is. Well, except that hers is visually layered. It's visually layered. This is surface texture, not, not, not structurally layered like mine is. So I could draw similarities between my work and her work, although hers is much better, with this uh, small foot, that, that sense of, of, you know, precariousness and stability and pushing that quality. Um, and then there's, there's this, it is precarious, yeah. So, it is. Well, you could think of it as um, aerial landscape, looking at looking down at the landscape. Um, seeing the fields and, and that kind of thing. I don't have a picture of the one that I have. I wish I did. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> When I was teaching uh, 3D design, I used to have my students lie down on the tables and look at the room upside down. And, you know, I always loved doing that as a kid because I'd, I'd think about, okay, what would it be like to have to step over that beam up there, you know, <laughs> that's on the floor. <laughs> um, yeah, to look at the world in a different perspective is amazing. Yeah. And I think 
You looked her up, didn't you? Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. So did you find some of those um, installations of, of several of her pieces? Yeah. And that's very landscapey. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and some of, uh -huh. yeah, Geo geological, right, exactly, yeah, so what, um, we did we put layered in here, no, um, let's take a word like layered, what um, what meaning do you think lay layering brings to work, to artwork? Pardon? Depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our lives are layered. They're a layering of experience. Um, Mm hmm Yep. Yeah. Pardon? I couldn't hear that. Cumulative, right. Uh-huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's something about a piece of this size that um, will make your first impression is the form. And then, so you step back to look at the form. This happens with larger sculptures as well, or paintings, in that we, it forces us back, it manipulates us back to view it in its entirety and then the surface draws us in for a better look so it's almost the way in which um, we look at people we we see them from a distance and then if it draws us in then we get to know that person better than we when we would have you know so you can take all of these words that we find with your work or the work that, that inspires you and um, and apply them to life. Um, the, one of the words we said about uh, Pippins was smooth. The opposite of smooth is rough. And we know that people who have a rough life, we can apply that too rough. Um, rough also will push people away. It may, may make you feel that if I touch this, it's going to hurt my hand. So it's like a rough road, you know, it's a metaphor. So every, every decision that we make has that metaphorical potential. Uh, I mentioned yesterday that I like symmetry. Um, what does that what, what, what is symmetry? It's balance. Um, it's relatively predictable, which I'm not. <laughs> so that's interesting. <laughs> the body is symmetrical, exactly. Yeah, it's not really, no, no. Our faces aren't even, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Textural is, is uh, to me, the first word that came into my mind was richness, because I love that, the depth and, and um, I don't know, it draws me in, the texture. Patterned, and that brings me, so both uh, Pippins were, he goes by Pip, but um, this is another one of yours. Oh, this is yours. These are both yours. Okay. 
Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, we just did yours. <laughs> okay, I'm with the program now. <laughs> Doesn't it? It's like confetti, isn't it? Yeah. Some it's a Japanese process. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Layering. Layered. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's adding colorant to the clay and making blocks, and then you cut it up. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. You don't no. It is meticulous, exactly. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Yep. No, it, it, this isn't. Huh? Yeah. Asymmetrical. Um, Yes, good word. Yep. Mm-hmm. Interesting, huh? So it's uh, hemispherical. Pardon? It is. Okay. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you ahead of time what we're going to do with your pieces that you brought in is that we're going to put paper by it and you're going to go around and write words that the work that's in front of you um, makes you think of. And then you're going to have that list and this list to look and see whether you're getting in your work what has recurred on these lists. Okay, that's where we're headed. And in between, just so we're not all just sitting around all day, because we'll do that at the end of the day, um, I have a couple of bases over here, and um, I'm gonna, they're trimmed, and I'm going to just let you add textures to the top of them so you can break up into two teams and just play with texture and, and make a couple of pieces for the studio. Okay? You can do whatever you want to it. You can flute them, you can flatten them, you can leave them as they are, you can cut the top, whatever your team decides to do. And then you can use my tools to make textures or do whatever you want, okay? So we'll do that kind of, pardon? Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought maybe at 10.30 we'd take a little break and then, um, then we'll come back and do some more of these so you can go out and run around the campus. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> Get a little exercise, and then we'll come back. Okay, let's keep going on this piece. Did you have others that you brought? Okay, let's look at a sculpture then. <coughs> Pardon? No. 
It's linear and nonlinear, isn't it? These are only in the outside of Eugene and Jackson Hall. Oh, wow. And, um, huh. They're um, Indian or Native American paintings. Okay. Did a Native American make them? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be interesting to know. Uh, it's, yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah. It's a the museum is has a thing, but you know, it has a lot of Native American pieces. Okay. Oh, so it was at a museum. It probably yeah. there probably is Native yeah. American then. Also at the same time Andy Warhol has oh, an exhibition nice. of Andy Warhol. <laughs> okay. okay, let's keep going. I, I think this is um it makes me think of candy, candy-like. Yeah, Pez, exactly. <laughs> Different what? Right, exactly. Well, they might be those other, what kind of, are the, the ones that don't burn out? In, yes, the inclusion, the inclusion stains. I mean, red burns out at most cult, most temperatures, so these could be. Yeah, I want to finish with this pot, with this piece first. Yeah, no. Um, just to get the list a little bit longer. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. What was that? Feisty? <laughs> yeah. White water. You know, it is it is fluid in its geometric way, isn't it? It could look like a splash. Mm -hmm. It's another one, I think, that um, would tend to draw you in to look at the interior um, to, as, as Gay says, want to pick it up. <laughs> you know, look, I want to look at the bottom. <laughs> um, so it does draw us in. It's, what was the word that you used? Yeah, um, attractive, yeah. Meaning that it draws us in, but. Okay, so now let's look at the, the sculpture. It's hard to see detail on these. We're really just getting the, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The bronze. So um, it's hard to see whether there's any color on them, or are they the just the bronze? They're all bronze color. Okay, so they're metallic. I put that down. Yeah. Okay. They aren't shiny. They aren't shiny. Okay. Okay. Yeah. When I was at Enseca, there's a Native American from the, um, I'm not going to say the name of the tribe, of the nation, because I don't, 
know to pronounce it correctly, but a New Mexico Pueblo. And he was asked, he was demonstrating, and he was asked, if you're not Native American and you make tall vertical things, can you call it a totem? And he really, he really avoided the question, but having been in Australia several times, you do not copy Aboriginal work. You do not copy Aboriginal work. And, uh, and I feel that way about Native American work because we don't, we can't understand the meaning of the work and to, to be true to it. As, um, so that's why I was asking if this was done by, what's that? What's that? You're kidding me. <laughs> then they're not totems. Does he really? <laughs> That's amazing. And yeah. Of, and of course, he's in the picture. They're really large. <laughs> That's so funny. You, it, oh, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, it's really frowned upon, you know, yeah. Yeah. Because we're, we're going by our aesthetic, not by the meaning behind the work, you know. Um, but if you get a chance, look up Virgil Ortiz. He's amazing. He's, he's, uh, he does his work. It's very political work, but he does it in the form, the traditional forms of his. You, do you know him, Roberta? You know of him? He's, he's just, I just adore him. He's the nicest. You know, he walks in a room and he smiles and you just love him. Um, and year, in like 20, 2003, 2004, he was hired by Donna Coran to design fabric for her. And, and now he does film, but he also still makes the traditional pots, but he puts contemporary imagery on those pots and um yeah he's, he's so good so good and so he, he makes films and he has his cousin in she's in la but she manages him you call him and he'll yeah anyway it's interesting here that most of these are abstract right so vertical Oh. Pardon? Uh huh. Are they? Um, is what's in them representational? That they're top. Yeah, they're they're topped with that, and there looks like there are birds on a few of them. There's an eagle there. This looks like a duck or a goose. I don't think it's textured. It looks smooth. Yeah. Except for these two that look like they might be patinaed. This one and this one. I wonder if Herb, pardon? 
Move, yeah. Oh, I've got that. Um, I wonder if Herb Alpert is um, Hispanic or part native. He could be. If you better get, you better get on that. <laughs> Alpert, yeah, or German. or German, yeah. And yeah, it was kind of south of the border type, Latinx or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope he's not watching this streaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's take a break and come back to this and and um, get a little movement. <laughs>
So we have <clears throat> metallic, smooth, weathered, spiritual, totem-like, abstract, vertical, tall, movement. Organic is a good one. <laughs> Pardon? What is it? Culturally inappropriate. Appropriated, huh? I missed that. Oh, Ukrainian. Yeah, poor Ukraine. Um, I bet. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> You've been great. <coughs> Penetrated. Sure. <laughs> there you go. So you having taken this and stood next to them, it looks like the, um, the actual structure is relatively abstract. Is that true? With like here's a look what looks like either a dog or a deer's head right in here. So it's abstract and then with elements of well, God abstract. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Somebody else, you said something, uh, Nancy. Did you? <laughs> and <coughs> it is true. So this is interesting because that's so different than these two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not phallic. <laughs> Pardon? Control. Yeah. Yeah. Uterine. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have that here. For the sculptures, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Oh, you rebel. <laughs> So, who is this here? Oh, this is your picture from, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking your Herb Alpert just hangs out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, so they were permanently blocked off. Oh. Okay. Oh. Huh. Yeah, right. 
You don't know, do you? Okay. Mm hmm. Soaring, right, right. Okay. I find this part interesting, you know, this piece where he has these, pe these open areas. This one seems to meet, this one doesn't. And, I, I'm and then there's something similar here, but here's a penetration. And these look so much different, almost as if they were done by someone like Stephen DeStabler or somebody, you know? <laughs> Flew out, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting that the the few things that I see as representational are birds. Um, which adds to that soaring kind of effect. He hears a. We're there? It's either a deer or a dog. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Pointy bits. Pointy. Yeah. Well, and, and again, you know, contrast is one of the principles or elements of design, which is it done? Contrast. Um, yeah. And these smooth surfaces contrast with the more projectile kinds of things. The smooth surfaces draw us in to want to, to touch, and then these other more pointy things keep us away a bit. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, I'm going to give this back to you, Nancy. These were yours, Virginia? Okay. Now, I have one from Jay. Do you have another one, or did you bring more? Here's your list. Ooh. Ooh. Let's do this one first. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Make me want to touch it. Yeah. It it kind of makes me think of Joman a little yeah. bit, even though their textures are at the top. Fluid, somebody else said something else. Mm-hmm. Concentric. It looks like it has a rough surface to it. The texture is rough. So kind of figurative. <laughs> to me, it looks like arms outstretched and this drapery over it. 
It's as if this is a skin on top of some underlying structure. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Draped or what? Slumped. Slumped, okay. Yes. All the way around. Yeah, yeah. Right. Hard, inspirational. <laughs> it, to me, it has has a spiritual quality. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, vaginal. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. Uterine. Uterine. I can't tell if this part is an object in there or if that's the other edge like if it's three-sided the other edge yeah it looks like it's three-sided yeah drapery uh-huh mm-hmm yeah. And somebody said it makes you want to see the other side. Was that what you said, Jay? Uh, these, these lines draw us that way. I mean, it's kind of a device for people to, for artists to use that will, it draws the eye over and that makes us want to see more. Um, I think it, those are, I think at least the surface is coiled on top, it may be sprigged on top, or it may be put together with flat, flattened coils as a, a piece. Yeah. Inviting. What was that? Settled. Settled, okay. I think because it doesn't come down flat to the ground, there's a sense of uplift to it in the form. It's a beautiful form. Mm hmm I I turned to John when I saw it and said this it makes me think of Jomon, the Japanese early do you know Jomon? I love Jomon thought. Can you look it up? Pardon? J O N no O N. Yeah. You have a rope like mm -hmm. the, Yeah. Thing. But it's all clay. Yeah. Iconic. I'm going to put Joman down. I love Joman. Oh, it's another one. Oh. It was like what era? Two and three hundred? Yeah, it's old enough that if they didn't find that stuff, they wouldn't even know there's people around. Mm -hmm. Right? They, because they had ceramic statues outside, and so they knew that something was going on there, and they would have known forever, but they didn't know there were burials there. Right? Yeah. Um, it's, 
So, so long ago, if they didn't find it, they would have never known who those people were. So it's, did we say meditative? I think it's meditative. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> Brown, there you go. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, layered. Is it a historical piece or is it contemporary? You didn't look at the details. Okay. It looks historic to me. We're going to say it's historic. <laughs> for the details yeah yeah okay we have a <coughs> excuse me we have a lot of words for that one so let's go to this one yes Mm hmm Oh, okay. There it is. Uh, what, what, somebody said something about this one. Maternal. Okay, thank you. <coughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Yes. Huh? Yeah. These two are. Yeah. This is grounded. Very grounded. Serene. Mm hmm. Figurative. Did you see some images of Joman? Yeah, it'd be good for <clears throat> sure. I love that piece. Oh, yeah. Down. Look. Oh, you can see that. Yeah. You can see why you like it, huh? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. And this one is, this is a good one. Those are, um, the Joman pieces are very ceremonial, and I kind of feel that way about the first one we looked at here. <clears throat> yeah. It looks like it's marble or uh, stone, doesn't it? Oh, so do you think it's stone or clay? Okay, yeah. Mm hmm Wow. 
What color? I'm putting down unglazed. And unglazed actually fits the Joman piece too. Jomanish. <laughs> oh yeah, it's gray. Oh, that's multicolored. The light. Oh, that's with the light on it. <clears throat> yeah, that's beautiful. And yet it's just a junky, you know, piece. But <laughs> hold it up here. You want, you want stuff that really meant something. Okay, well, it, here. Whoops. It's a rough finish, actually. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like that, huh? Rough. So, you know, think in thinking about these words, how does rough relate to maternity? <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it changes the feel of the piece than it, um, different than it would be if, uh, if it were really smooth and glossy. Yeah, it does. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. It's funny in uh, in that one the place the you know, fake antique market I was telling you about yesterday. One of the things that you hear when you're walking down the the rows of booths in the back is people. You can't see them. They're behind their booths, but they're pounding on their clay objects to to craze them. And then they rub them in the dirt, and then they, you know. Oh, right. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. There are fake antique markets all over the place, aren't there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to the the third one that Gay brought. So in China, there's a fake antique that are like 300 years old. Yeah. Right? Because back, you know, like 300 years ago, they were making replicas of uh, things that were 100, came 100 years before then. Uh-huh. Oh, sure. Right? So you're looking at a fake that's like 200 years old that's trying to be a 300-year-old pot. Wow. Right? Or a thing. So it's very hard to tell. Yeah. All the weathering and everything is actually, actually authentic. Yeah. And they have oh. similar materials. Right? Yeah. But the uh, guys can say, some of the people can tell that, oh, they're using a different cobalt. Oh. Right? So they can, see so they the can tell. The cobalt had changed, right, where they were getting it from. Because over the 100 years, right, all that line, they weren't mining it there. But that's oh, wow. Well. Right? That's, so that's. That's um, that's an antique, they, right? But it's not. But it's from, a reproduction. It's a reproduction of something that's four hundred years old. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. I was at uh, San Bao, which is right outside of Jingdezhen, and we were supposed to be at this auction of that Jackson Lee was selling off this stuff from his museum up in up above, and it was so funny because. I, it was somebody from Alfred, like Wayne Higby or I, John Gill, maybe. And they didn't want to wait for the the um, museum director to get there to auction these off. So they just said, we want to pay now. So they let them pay. 
he went off with his little antique. And as soon as, I mean, we're all standing around this table. And as soon as they leave, he whips out another one just exactly <laughs> like it. <laughs> so the lesson there is it's only worth what you're willing to pay for it. You, you, there's no guarantee that it's that it's real. Yeah. Okay, let's get on to this. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, this one um, Gay showed to me is, is quite colorful. This is um, a blue. It almost looks like it has crystals in it. It looks a little iridescent and dichroic almost in this glaze up here. A little bit of that is is reflected lower. Um, and let's start with, with some words here. Yes. A tree with an iridescent cap on it. <laughs> yeah, it is tree like. Uh huh. I didn't. Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, it's figurative. Looks like it has a navel <laughs> and feet. Yeah. What? Yeah. It yeah, kind of like a tin man. Oh yeah, the tin the tin man. Oh, oh, yeah. It's kind of like a child doing I'm a little teapot. <laughs> Hobbit? Uh-huh. I wish we could turn these around and see. Lots of what? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's more crudely put together. I don't know that that's a good word, but yes. Yeah. And I, um, I'm drawn to the warm cool, the blue with the orange, very contrast. Mm -hmm. So was the second figure. Looks like it, doesn't it? Oh, it isn't? No. Kind of squared off. Uh, 
Um, no. Any others? So <clears throat> if we were to look at, I don't know if we can do this with this the way it is. Probably won't show them all, will it? Huh? <clears throat> oh, and that's and then this one. We'll do this. Like that. So for this one, we have gestural. This is gestural too, isn't it? We have a lot of words about that piece. Uh, we have organic, which is on other lists. We have figurative. They're all figurative, we said. Um, figurative. On the on the two or all three? Yeah. Is different, isn't it? Yeah, it's got different qualities. <clears throat> yeah. Chaotic for the the middle one. Mm hmm. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there are um, more similarities between these two than, than this third one. But um, you'll be able to find more as we move on. Is there anybody we haven't done? We haven't done Catherine. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. You want help? <laughs> okay, then, let's help. So, I need some more uh, newsprint, if I could, please. So, I just want to give you a sense of what I have. Okay. So, I'm really, really into Milton Avery. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, and this one is. Joseph Albert. Thank you. <laughs> and then I got these all this uncolored pottery. Just really simple stuff. That's Jennifer Lee. Yeah, I she's, love Jennifer Lee. Yeah, she's good. Yeah. I saw her work. Huh? Jennifer Lee? Um, that one's Jennifer Lee, too. 
She's British, isn't she? She's Scottish. Yeah. Is she Scottish? Yeah. yeah. That's British, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm, I don't think Which so. One? No. This I one? Think, yeah. No. no. She, works with, <clears throat> she works with clay that she has put in the ground with her schoolwork that she was doing. Wow. And just different colors. I'm really good at tearing paper. I don't know. I don't know if, if she throws or I don't, I've never no, met her. She hand builds. She hand she builds. Okay. Wow. Well. Most of them are about like this. Yeah. Not like Pip and Drysdale. I don't know. Um, she, she won some big bathtub from a year. Some of them. Is that hers? That's Lucy Reed. Lucy Reed, that's what I thought. I some don't know of who that is. Yeah, I don't know either. Oh, you just have the one of Jennifer Lee? And this. And this, because a lot of those, I think, are colored, are different clays. Right. And um, that takes real time, not just to form, but to let the moisture equalize and all of that kind of stuff. Now, I don't know. I don't know her. I don't know the technique, but pardon? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Who's this? Oh, okay. John War. Okay. She's also British. So, what do you want us to look at? Well, I want. <laughs> no, we're not doing all that. I want to see that, like, all of the pottery I chose is like really self-contained and white or gray, and all the paintings are these like wild. Okay, so so let's um, without you showing me which relate closer to the work you do. These are quite minimal. Yeah, I, I'm pretty minimal. The work you do. I mean, there's a lot of similarity between the pots yeah. you've chosen. And there's a lot of similarity. A lot of similarity. Between, yeah. Like, yeah. Military. Okay, let's let's forget the Albers. Let's go. Okay. Let's pick one of the Averys. Okay. Let's pick. <laughs> that one? Yeah. Okay. All right. Is this the one that... Is this the one that moves you the most of the of the um, Avery's? One of Avery's. Yeah. This is, oh, I, is I, it really? Yeah. That's good for and, watching. Thank you. And this one is the Oregon Coast. Oh. Huh. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Um, which I chose because it was the Oregon Coast and because a friend of mine who's a photographer had just sent me this incredible Oh, picture of her silk rock. Okay. So, All right. So let's go to this one. Oh. Yeah, there's green. This foreground from here is there's the horizon line here, and this is green down below. What was that? <laughs> it is. Yeah. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's it's a little bit because of the triangulation of the of the trees. It's a little more a combination of geometric and it's like an organic triangle. <laughs> <coughs> Yes. Blue? Yeah, I've got blue and green down here. It's actually a bluish green, I think. Mm hmm Because of the linear elements, huh? Outlined. It's loose. It's funny how there are three trunks to one of the trees and two to the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, must be trees behind them, huh? Of exactly the same shape. <laughs> yeah. That's true. It is dancing trees, right? Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> right. Trying to. Yeah. What is it? Drifting. Mm -hmm. hmm. Any more? Okay, let's go to another one. This one. What is it? Cracked? Cracked. So it's a composite, huh? Irregular. You think? It's textured. There's a little no, yeah, come and look at this. Yeah. yeah. Well, it looks tapery. It does. It's very tapery. Mm hmm Yeah, you can see right through. So it's uh, smooth inside. And rough. Oh, yeah, we got that. Delicate. Oh, we got that, I said. It 
it's organic. Some little black dots. Yeah, dotted. It's textured. Do you? Too bad Milton didn't use any. What's he thinking? Um. Mm hmm. Definitely layered. To me, it, it's a little bit cellular. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, these with the little dots in the center are kind of egg like, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Is there? Oh, good. Thank you. I missed that. Oh, really? Oh, huh. That's strange. So far, we have minimal that is on both lists. Tactile, definitely. Is Avery's painting tactile? Okay, we have floral on this list and tree-like on the other, so there's some biological similarity, yeah, organic. Handwriting is getting terrible here. Um, mm -hmm. It's interesting because if you put the two next to each other, how many of these similarities would you come up with, really, you know, that, that were able to come up with so many things? Okay, uh, it's not colorful, it's not whimsical, not mountains or trees. Or mushrooms, uh, simplistic, but they, they both are. What do you think? Yeah. 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 Yes. <clears throat> well, I think so, but I don't know. Mm. 
It very well could be because this is spherical. Mm -hmm. So it could be if if what Virginia says is correct, if it's formed on a balloon, then a stamp could be used that would cause these little ridges in between the two while it's still on the balloon or whatever form is there, huh? What do you think? Or, yeah, we need Lily here on this one, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, or, yeah. Uh-huh. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Okay, we're going to go to number three. Let's go to one of um, these. Let's go to that one. <clears throat> this is the Jennifer Lee. No, this isn't Jennifer Lee. Oh, it is? Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. Good word. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oops. I keep wanting to cross the L in geological. Botanical, you said? So there's an organic quality to it, isn't it? Isn't there? And minimal. Yeah, the round bottom. Uh huh. So landscape like is uh, uh huh. Yeah. I think it's warm in its tones. It's kind of a um, gray, beige, grayish. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's kind of separated by that, that bottom. This is another one. I want to turn it around to see how the, and that linear element does that to us. It wants us to see what's on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just the, uh, the reflection of whoever's taking the photo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, very similar. And there's a sense of how big it is. 
Oh, here she is. Hmm. No. We didn't say, oh, we did say minimal. Okay. It looks perfect to me. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Im kind of implied translucence, will that cover it? Mm-hmm. Depth, depth. Yeah. On these, I've circled some of the similar, similar or same words, but not all of them. So you can um, look at that. But you're going to want to maybe take those and make a list of those things that recur, as I said before. Like looseness, maybe? When I was in, uh, in my final year as an undergraduate, I took a, an, um, that, I think I told you, I took this course at Anderson Ranch from um, Christina Bertoni from RISD. And uh, she did a lot of work in these big platters that she slump molded. And then they were very, um, what do I want to say, the universe. They were star, stars and skies, they, but they were very dark, black and white, with stars and constellations and a lot of that kind of thing. She was a student at RISD, I mean at uh, Cranbrook when she was doing it. And then she went to a show that had all of this brightly colored work. So she went back to graduate school and started making all this brightly colored work. And I think DeVore was there, Richard DeVore was there, and he said, what are you doing? And she told him, I went to this show and I saw it, and he said, when that happens, go to Benetton and wear it. <laughs> Don't let it influence your work. <laughs> So stick with what you're doing. <laughs> so it might be that you have to look at which you relate to more, this simple, um, clean, more muted coloration of the two pieces or this bright color. You might want to go and buy some really bright clothes. <laughs> they do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just wear it. <laughs> I love that story. Did you really? Yeah. You just don't want to, you know, you, you might be drawn to that. It might give you that. But does it fit with your overall um, body of work, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah.
So interesting. Huh. That's an interesting comment. Yeah. Yeah. Should I tell them my Harris Geller story? Sure. Yeah. The Cranbrook made me think of it. I mean, this is off track here, so we'll have a little diversion. But um, I had gotten into these different schools and I went and visited. I mentioned that during my talk. And when I was visiting Harris Geller at Carbondale, where I ultimately ended up, he was driving me around town and, and he had gone to Cranbrook. So I was driving to Cranbrook next to um, see if I liked that program and stuff. And so I said, why did you pick Cranbrook? And he, he told me the story. And he said, when I was an undergraduate, he was at Northridge College in California. And he said, I applied to graduate schools and I didn't get in anywhere. And he was making this awful California funk work. And he said, and then at the end of the summer, somebody said to me that Cranbrook had a no-show. So why don't you apply there? So we applied there and he got in after he'd not gotten in anywhere. And uh, he said he arrived and DeVore was the instructor. And DeVore, the first thing he said to him was, I want you to know I don't like your work. <laughs> and he said, the reason I chose you is that you had uh, a letter of recommendation from someone who wrote a letter years ago for someone else. That letter was glowing. And he was terrible. And your letter was kind of mediocre. And I wanted to see what the difference was. <laughs> so then uh, he said, at Cranbrook, it's a two-year program, and you have to move out in the summer. At least it was that way then. And, and then they have the option of telling you, don't come back. So Harris got his letter saying, adios, you know, don't come back. And um, he said the only way you'd get to come back would be to take a walk in the woods with Richard DeVore and beg. So he said, I did. I took my walk in the woods and I begged. And DeVore said, if I let you come back, what are you going to do? And Harris said, I don't know. And DeVore said, okay, we've got somewhere to start. And he let him come back. And then a few years later, um, DeVore had him come in as a visiting professor when he went on sabbatical, so it was all good. But <clears throat> I thought anybody who can be that self-deprecating, I can work with. And so I ended up there, but then he came to visit us in Wyoming, and I said, okay, Harris, I tell this story all the time. Let me tell it back to you to make sure I'm telling it correctly. He said, pretty much the way it was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, anyway. Absolutely. He, for a long time, was known for these celadon teapots. And it's evolved differently now and over the years. But uh, he went after graduate school and did a fellowship in Korea. And he studied the bunchong, you know, carving and, and all of that. But he was already making functional work and wonderful functional work. He's a great thrower, but he just totally changed his work from this brightly colored funk that was, and he just couldn't do it well. Sorry, Harris. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, yeah, I know it. And it's on there. You can edit it out. Uh, no, I, I just think he'd, he'd like it. He would like it. He was a great professor. I never regretted going there. Harris Deller. So he, Are we done? Yeah, I think so. Here's your list. Um, he was great. He's just a great guy. Okay. Look at this. This is Martha. Martha Grover. Oh, her name's right there. <laughs> Susie Lindsay, I just saw her. She, her husband passed away last year um, all of a sudden. Or no, he had pancreatic cancer, but it, he'll, he only lived four months after he was diagnosed. Okay. Give me words, quick, organic.
Pardon? The pots, yeah, just or her pots. What is it? Floating. Yeah. John said she came and did a uh, demonstration. She has so much facility with her hands, doesn't she? Oh, she's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's why these are all perfect. Perfect. Consistent. Soothing? Smooth. Pardon? I still couldn't hear you. Soothing. Okay, sorry. Soft. Functional. Mm -hmm. Did we, we said organic, didn't we? Fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we have that one. This one, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe not. This one looks like this, t this pitcher looks like it's spewing this handle that's behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Repetitive. You know, this to me is a, and, and all of your pieces are here. Um, they're evidence of just what we're doing. You know, her aesthetic doesn't bring anything in that doesn't go together. It's all, uh, her thesis is there, <laughs> definitely. Yep. In many ways, her work, not the bowls so much, but it's animated. Technical. Is it? She's in here all. I can't hold her here. Yeah, because his colors are quite bright. You know. um, I 
organic. <laughs> Playful. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's gestural. You can see his gestures in it. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a different one, but it's, yeah. Yep. Vivid. And actually, Martha Grover's are bright colors, not quite as this bright, but hers are vibrant colors as well. She uses pinks and kind of a mint green and things like that. The what? Kind of pastel, a little more pastel than a lot more pastel than Stephen. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Definitely. Floral. It is. It does. You're right. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. No, just glaze. And it has the warm, cool contrast. It is. Yeah. So his are altered. And so... Um, Oh, we got this chemical thing. Altered, thrown, as are Martha's. Somebody's, oh, I got functional. Um, His are quite expressive, huh? Uh-huh. Do you think Martha's is dynamic to work? Huh? Quiet? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He he does um hand slips. Yeah. You've watched him work. Yeah. Well, he uses his hand to dip into it, to it and then smears, you know, let's, while the wheel's going, he's moving his hand and the slips are, are um, yeah, so there's a lot of texture to the surfaces. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's look at either Susie Lindsay or Elaine Coleman. These? You, you want to look at this? Yeah. Okay.
Yeah. Yeah, she still ends up with a smooth surface. And yet, and yet the glazes break and pool beautifully in her work. They're usually celadons, greens and blues. Porcelain always, yeah. And there's a Coleman porcelain. I think he probably formulated that, I think. I know. Very shallow, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Just the glaze, it breaks and pools. So all I have is carved, shiny, smooth, organic. Pardon? Movement? You said something too botanical. <laughs> Movement, I got that, yeah. 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 You want to, yeah, yes. I think you're going to find that there are um, some things here that are similar. Um, her work is so much more formal, I think. It makes me want to carve. Bear? You said bear? More formal. Then the other two that we just looked at, Martha and Stephen. Yeah. It has a lot of depth and layering. Is it? What is it? Aspirin? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Controlled, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Stevens are not cheap either. <laughs> mm Oh yeah. Yeah. Maybe this one does. It has it does have um elements here that are Oh yeah. But see these this these are more like flowers that are blooming between the leaves. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, and so it it's yeah. been altered. So
Would you call that foot a seraph? <laughs> Didn't you come up with the seraph? No. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. I th this one is um, manipulated from the inside, too. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they both do. In, on Stephen's, on that platter, it's the rim is manipulated, definitely. And I think Stevens have a really strong foot too because I think they could be put on the wall. So they probably have a wire or some hanging method. Okay, anybody have anything else to say about dear old Elaine Coleman? No, oh, you didn't bring any? Or? Oh, just the photos. Okay, and you have more than one? Yeah, bring them up and we'll look at them. And then you're the last one? You're, oh, you're okay. No, you. we haven't done you yet, have we? We did you. No, okay. Okay, yeah. This is the duplicate. Oh, that's funny. Oh, funny. Pardon? Okay. Okay, perfect. All right. I'll put them where you can see them. Oh, yeah. So let's start with the uh, flower. Just to save time, I put down organic. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to do all three lists <laughs> with organic. <laughs> this is this is purple. Yeah. Yeah, here's the This is purple. Yes, definitely. Number three, it's whimsical. Which ones? Number two, yes. And linear. All of them are, aren't they? Are those hosta? Huh? Huh. B. 
beautiful leaf, isn't it? Really? You do? Oh, nice. Do you have one of the frogs? <laughs> do you? That's cute. Yeah, that's cute. Oh, funny. <laughs> that's funny. No, that's funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. Do you look at her? Yeah. Two E F. One e, one f, a p, a p v. I had to count. <laughs> so, have you seen the um, what is it? Um, Judy Chicago's dinner, or what is it called? Dinner party, yeah, yeah. You like that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think that this necessarily relates to the frogs, but I see these as overlapping, you know, and so somewhat layered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The what? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What are they sitting on? A carrot. Oh, oh my gosh. And the wheels are faucet handles, aren't they? Oh my gosh. Two rabbits fighting. Yeah. Are they like surfing? You're riding the rat, riding the carrot. And there's the faucet wheel. <laughs> it's definitely in contrast to these two. Okay. Uh huh. So they're detailed. They're details, details. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Yeah. They're they're kind of the micro world. Not kind of. Where? Oh, yeah. Yeah.
um, the two botanicals are, I would say feminine or vaginal. Not that the frogs aren't. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Well, true. <laughs> yeah, the the frogs are sexual. <laughs> They are the um, all the other ones sexual, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think these frogs are voluptuous. All of the, yeah. I can't wait to see what you make out of this. Oh, wow. Oh, sorry, I was just sharing it with myself. And look the color. Yeah, the color of this is these are Pepto Bismol yeah. pink. Yeah. What are they? Fox glove. Yeah. Yeah. You see that? I know, right? Well, all those words we just came up with fit that too. Yeah. <coughs> More words? And we've got, well, we've got curvaceous. I really like these rabbits. <laughs> Those are great. <laughs> Riding a carrot, and here's the faucet wheel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whimsical we have. With her play work? Okay. Oh, that's good. That's nice. <coughs> Is it voluptuous or sexual or... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, fun. You know, and what is the function of that pot? It's what? Spoon holder. Okay. Um, yeah. No, that's really fun. Um, the reason I asked you is that, oh, the, the uh, woman who teaches at Boulder, she, I know her, and she makes these large botanical constructions, 
And she made a series of human element extenders so women could pee in the wild, standing up. So when you brought that up, it looked like a little trough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hers were a little more pointed at the other end so they would fit, you know. Do you? Yeah, yeah. There's one that, pardon? Oh, it is, huh? Yeah, well, she made porcelain ones. There's nothing wrong with squatting, but. Yeah. Or you might get bitten when you <laughs> put your bum down. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have to look that up. A she pee. S H E P E E. Kim Dickey. Kim Dickey is the one she teaches at uh, Boulder. And and the photograph that she had <laughs> showing the use of it. Um, it just it just went to here. And then it showed how, how to use it anyway. Those were good. <laughs> okay, we're off track. <laughs> Again. <laughs> but there's a whole new world for you. <laughs> yeah. I want to see that porcelain. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did. We had an article on them in Art and Perception. This is so much like all of this. Yes, they do. Green. But the playfulness, and as I saw this, it was quite sexual. I have to go like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have quite a few words here for you. <laughs> These are good. <laughs> did I put down micro? Oh, I did. Micro world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Catherine and and we Oh, here's a right here. Okay. Ooh. Let's see how I can put these. Okay. I'm going to move this down. Like this? That'll work, huh? We keep getting that light above. Yeah. Is that going to get them? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yes, for sure. I'm kind of doing this as a list about all of them, but if there are differences, I'll move it apart. Is it all bowels? They're, no, they're um, oh, oh. Roberta's.
No, they're all natures. Yeah, but look at this. Look at the similarity between these two things. Yeah. This one, the one in the middle, it looks like it could be off of a hornet's nest or something like that. Yeah. Or a seashell. In what? Doesn't it? I thought it looked like a, you know, like a hive. Yeah. The one on the right seems voluminous to me. If I can spell it. It looks like a what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a sh I couldn't hear you. Oh, yeah. Did you miss your meeting? <laughs> at one, we'll break at one for lunch, you know. Mm hmm All of them? The what? Repetitive. Yeah. No. All of them. Where is this? Oh, this was in the Grand Canyon. Okay. I think it's lava like. Hmm. Yeah. It looks, yeah. Yeah. It is really? Oh, yeah, sure. 
So are they like stalagmites, you mean, where they're stripping on them? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what else? Okay. On the on both, all three. The middle one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So one and three uh, have something to do with moisture, water. The middle one? Pardon? Impermanence, yeah. In all of them or? It'll be hard to, it'll be hard to translate into ceramic material, <laughs> which would be here 10,000 years. Huh, just drop it, yeah. Right, so they have dimension. Dimensional. Imperfection. Yeah. These are probably the three that have most in common of any of the work we've looked at, you know? These two are so much alike in their qualities, I think. Yeah, yeah, hugely different. Yeah, okay. The one on the left looks like it could tip over someday. Wow. 
Where did you say that is? Oh, wow. Don't you wonder how that greenery grows on the top of that? <laughs> the mountains, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Birds. <laughs> okay, what else? This one is repetitive. Yes, I've got repetitive for all of them. Oh. And I think that's in the striation and yeah. and the repeat repetition of these. Bumpy, yeah. It's cloud-like. A little heavier. Any more? Going once? <laughs> okay, good.